Hi, my name is Jeff Garner. Welcome to Ultrasonic Testing Demystified. This is part two of uh, flaw signal characteristics. Last uh, video I showed you what kind of A scan signals you to expect from different types of flaws. Again, I want to stress that those are the general rules. They're most of the time they'll, they'll be uh, accurate. There are always going to be uh, exceptions. Right, today I'm going to go a little more into detail using some uh, training aids. I like to use visual aids when I teach uh, classes to kind of help people visualize what it is they're seeing. Right, so we're going to be using a flashlight. Uh, we have uh, to represent slag. We've got uh, toilet paper roll wrapped in aluminum foil. This is lack of fusion, smooth surface, aluminum foil. Over here we have a rough surface, crumbled up aluminum foil to represent the surface of a crack. Last but not least, we have a cluster of porosity. Little uh, Christmas tree ornaments. So let's get started. Okay. Let's take a look at slag. Again, just for a recap. As you can see, I'm at uh, 12 dB over reference. Put it down at reference, see the low amplitude. Right. Both sides get a pretty low amplitude. Very low. Put some gain back in there. All right, so see there the little trailing echo behind that we talked about in the last video. Very typical of slag. You skew it. It's got a little bit of a rough surface, and it uh, you can still see it when you skew it for just a little bit. Okay, first I've got uh, our slag here. screen. As you can see, generally we get a, a low amplitude reflection unless we hit it just right. So slag should be a fairly clean signal, but it's got those few characteristics that I showed you last video. Moving on to porosity. If you, you can see we're at tw plus 12 dB, very low in amplitude. You can skew it and it's visible for a long time. We have a very low amplitude at 12 plus 12 dB, imagine that reference. Typical for porosity. Okay, here we have our porosity. Okay, as you can see, you get a bunch of separate individual reflections from porosity. Mostly low amplitude. This probably isn't like the best representation, but it's the best we got. This you should be able to see from 360 degrees around if you could move the probe all the way around if the weld cap weren't in the way. And you'd be able to see it from every single angle. So again, low amplitude, really rough signal looking signal that's a clump of multiple signals okay lack of fusion Let's find that here. so lack of fusion as we discussed in the last video that will give you high amplitude pretty clean signal you don't really see uh, facets or rough surface on it as you skew it. The most, one of the most important things is when you skew it, that signal just falls straight down. It does not walk at all in time. That's lack of fusion. Okay, now, so a crack, this is a root crack. This might go forward and away. It changes depth. It walks a lot. Um, 
or a reference amplitude or a reference gain and you get pretty high amplitude out of it you skew it and it stays visible for um, quite a bit that's because of the rough surface here's from the other side rough surface, multiple facets, and that's a crack. Here we've got lack of fusion. You can see when I have the flaw at 90 degrees to the light beam or sound beam, uh, we've got a nice strong bright signal. It's pretty clean and smooth. All right, now watch what happens when we skew. All right, we start skewing and that signal just go, drops right off. Indication goes right away. Nothing once you start skewing it to reflect that sound. Here we've got the crack. Alright, I get 90 degrees to the beam, pretty bright signal. You can see visually the roughness. Alright, that's going to come through on your A scan as well. But watch as I start to skew it, the difference between this and lack of fusion. As we start to skew it, you can still see little reflections. They reduce in amplitude, but all that roughness reflects some light back. So you can skew that probe quite a bit and still see the signal. That is the difference between the crack and lack of fusion. As you can see, training aids, visual training aids, can be a, a very beneficial uh, part of learning and teaching. I've found through the years teaching numerous classes that uh, not everyone learns the same. Some people can learn from reading, looking at a PowerPoint presentation, but it, it takes that extra something to cement it into their, into their head. Um, especially like learning phase array, a lot of people get overwhelmed. So simple visual aids are, are, are critical. I really uh, highly suggest that you uh, try this at home. That's easy. All you need is some aluminum foil, a flashlight, buy some uh, uh, Christmas ornaments like I did for porosity. Uh, it's not all perfect, but I think it really uh, is a good approximation of, of what we're trying to show here. This is just the second video in a series of probably four that I'm going to do. Uh, the next one I'll be uh, plotting uh, both drawing it out, conventional shear wave plotting, and then we'll look at uh, what to expect to see on S scans as far as position of the flaw. That's probably 80-90% uh, of what determines the flaw type you're going to call. So I will see you next time.